One thing about rural vehicles that you use on a mail route, you're going to go through a lot of heat cycles that a normal vehicle is not going to have. And one of those things that is going to fail is going to be your, your radiator fan switch. And you can go track down relays and replace relays. But a lot of these newer vehicles, it is also turned on by the computer. And I would just tell you that one of the easiest and the best things you can do is that once that fails, just replace it with an aftermark, aftermarket relay and temperature switch. And the easiest way and almost foolproof way for me to be able to do that is to go on eBay or Amazon and you will find these cooling fan switches. It comes with a 30 amp relay and I can't get it out anyway comes with a 30 amp relay and a wiring harness for you to get electricity to it. And one of the most important pieces is this right here. This is a probe. It will, you're not going to damage your radiator if you, if you do it right. You will push it in about an inch below the inlet of your radiator. Now, most vehicles, they, the water sucks out of the bottom of the radiator, goes to the, the water pump, and makes its way up through the engine and out. Reason is you want to put it an inch below it is so that it gets a pretty accurate temperature of what water, the coolant's coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to pull this fan shroud off and drill a hole so I can get this in through it. You're going to slowly push this through the fins and just kind of push the fins out, out of the way just enough to kind of hold it in place. And then this will be almost foolproof. Not every vehicle that you have that you're going to put an aftermarket temp switch in is going to have a shroud that completely takes up the hole. You, you'll be able to, some of them, you won't even have all of this, but this one I had to drill a hole. And look how perfect that hole is. Step drill. These little pieces, you can find, they're normally expensive, but Harbor Freight has them pretty cheap and they make life so much easier. And just like that, you will have a nice, perfect hole. So I did remove a lot of this. This comes off real easy on this vehicle. Here's my hole, and I got to push it through the fins. So I am kind of just starting it where I can I can see it, and see that little indention right there. I'm just gonna slowly push through it. Now, if a couple of these fins break, no problem. What you're really worried about is is now this one goes up and down. Some most most of them go sideways. You don't want to make a hole in one of those channels there. So. Just kind of push through, push through, and is it through? Yep, and then looks like I'm going to have to push through this one as well. Let's see where that is. So I saw where it was starting to go through, so I just took this and slowly but surely I was able to go through it there it is now I can finish it by going ahead and going through both of them making, making sure I'm lined up and there and then just put everything back together. I will go ahead and connect the, the connections on here before you know I leave the spot. This is the relay that I'm hooking up. Not every relay you're gonna buy is gonna be identical colors, but they kind of go fairly close. So this one right here is gonna be the one going to your battery. It's the one that's gonna provide power to your fan. This is going to the fan itself. And so is this one. So this can be really like a two fan relay, but I don't like doing that. And I really suggest that you don't do that. I rather run two separate relays to run two separate fans because if the fuse blows on this, because maybe one of the fans is, is starting to bind up and it blows the fuse, then both of your fans go down and then you're still broke down on the side of the road with a possible blown head gasket because you ran it too hot before you notice. So the best thing to do is just run two of these for two separate fans. And so again, this goes to the battery. One of these goes to your fan. Since I only have one fan on this vehicle, I just cut the blue one and just stayed with green because, you know, why not? The black one 
goes to your ground. And so I'm doing this to show you that I mounted my relay here. And then here's the black one, which is the ground. There was already a ground here, so I just went to it. And I went and decided to, to ground the fan because the fan has two wires. One's hot, one's the ground. And so I tied them together and put them here. Why not? This yellow one goes to your fan probe thermostat. And then the other side, because it, the fan probe has two terminals on it. The other side, you'll run to a 12 volt power source that is turned activated by the key. So I just went looking around in the fuse box, a relay box and found one and spliced into it. So that way, whenever you turn the vehicle off and the fan's running, the fan also runs off. It also eliminates the possibility that you're working around here, the engine's off and you got your hands up in the fan blade for some reason and oops, it automatically turns on because it senses the temperature getting a little too warm. So you want that on a on off with the, with the key. And then this is another important one. This white one here, uh, some of them have it gray, some of them have it brown, but either way, the instructions will tell you which one is to the switch. And what this means on the fan, on the cooling fan, you want this to go to your AC pump on the wire. So you take your, your test light, you go in there and put the vehicle on, on, don't crank it up. You take the terminal off of the AC pump, and mine is down here. Some of them only have one wire, this one has two. So I went and probed till I found where the light turned on, which meant it was hot, and I tied into it. So now, whenever that AC pump gets a signal to turn on, it will turn on your radiator fan. Now, you, you may wonder, why do you do this? Well, the factory setup is never designed to really last that long. And how many vehicles have run hot because you couldn't find where which relay because they don't ever really mark them so i just go ahead and bypass it when they do go bad and set up these these almost foolproof if they do go bad these are so cheap to buy you just splice into what you already have and i already have everything hooked up so once i put everything together well let me try it right now i'm going to turn the ac on without cranking up the vehicle it's going to send a, a message to the fan and you'll see it do it right now. And here we go. And then I wire it right. Yeah, the fan is, air is pushing toward the engine. It's a puller, pulling always does better. So there it is.